Hello my friends, it's Bruns here and welcome back to another video. Today we're going to be talking about the meta game in Texas Chainsaw Massacre which is coming out on Friday. Like all of you, I'm very excited about this game and I thought it would be really good to talk a bit about how the game will work because a lot of people don't know how the game will work yet even though there's been some videos around. So I thought it would be good to talk about it and just try and clarify as much as possible in preparation for the game on Friday. So the game will be three family members versus four victims and you'll be able to pick a family member out of five and same with the victims. Now each character will have a special ability and a massive skill tree. That skill tree will be full of perks. Each of those perks will obviously cost some points and as you navigate through the tree you will have to spend some points to reach certain perks and you get those points by gaining XP. How do you get XP? So you get XP by performing certain actions in game such as winning a close encounter, completing objectives, escaping or dismantling traps, killing your teammates, killing a victim, stunning the family members, anything you do in game will earn you XP and then you'll be able to use this XP to acquire skill tree points. Now it's important to know that the ability of each character can be leveled up up to three levels and it works the same with the perks, each perk is going to have three levels. So if we look on the screenshot here of Connie's skill tree, you can see that her ability is the very first thing you have already unlocked for you. And the more you use this, the more you're going to level it up. From there, if you go up on the skill tree, then you will be able to take different paths and choose different perks. If you choose to go right here, for instance, then all the other paths will close and you're only going to be able to access the perks that this path will lead you to. So whenever you get to a crossroad, then you have to make a decision and the other path will close. But you can always respect this. So it's never set in stone once you've made some choices. You can always go back and start all over again. Once you unlock perks, you'll be able to add those perks to your character. Now we can see here Connie's customization screen. The leftmost icon on the abilities and perks section is her main ability. The other three are the perks that you will unlock. And you can see here that there's a number one on each one of them, which means they're level one. So as you level them up by playing the game, you'll be, you're gonna see different numbers in there. Now the characters will have up to five loadouts, which means you're gonna be able to create different builds for your character and that will affect how your attributes look. So you can see here on this loadout that her endurance has gone up by 23 points, toughness by six, strength by one, and so on. So that's gonna happen depending on the perks that you load up on your character. And then one thing that is really interesting here is that as you progress through your skill tree you are gonna come across a random note that's gonna have a question mark like this one here and as far as I understand this is gonna come out of a pool of perks that are just random perks in the game and whenever you respect your tree that random node will change as well so you can kind of see where this is going. It can be that you're gonna have a skill tree that are gonna have one or two really strong random perks and then you're gonna respect that and you're gonna lose those. And then when you find those random nodes again, perks are gonna be different. This will definitely encourage you to try different builds. I think we can expect to see some really crazy builds going out there in the next few days. Very interesting take on skill tree building. Another thing worth knowing here is that you can see that you keep unlocking extra attribute points here. Those are the attribute points from the victims and the killers that they have endurance, stealth, proficiency, and you're gonna be spending these extra points on your character's loadout. Now the main difference on all this between the family members and the victims is that the family members, they will be able to put one extra perk there, as you can see here, which is grandpa's power. So this will be unique to each character and once grandpa reaches max level, this perk will activate. This is at least how I understand it. I don't know if it will activate if grandpa is anything below level five, but that's the one extra thing that the family members have. And the devs have already confirmed that the family will be slightly stronger than the survivors as a team. And maybe it's because of grandpa, I don't know. We're gonna have to wait and see. It's interesting as well that the family members they have 
three attributes and the survivors have five. It does make you think that there's going to be a lot more different combinations you can do with the survivors than with the family members. But then the family members, you'll be able to put one extra perk there, which is going to be grandpa. So that's that's quite interesting. That's going to make both teams feel quite distinctive of each other. And that's pretty much it, guys, in terms of how the skill tree and how the perks will work. We're just going to have to see what these perks are now and what synergies they are going to have with each other. On the meta game page, the devs have already put a few perks of note for victims, for instance, such as rally leader. When you rally the team by helping other victims, you and your team will recover from being incapacitated faster. Or perks of note for family, unrelenting. This increases your endurance. So to me, it all looks really clear and it looks really exciting at the same time. It definitely looks like we're going to have to grind a lot on this game to get to max levels and to unlock absolutely everything. And it also looks like the possibilities are going to be huge in terms of loadouts and builds and all that, which really makes me have a lot of faith that this game is here to stay and it's going to be one of the games of the year. I mean, we already had some really good scores on some reviews, especially GameSpot. That's pretty much it for today, guys. I will be posting more videos and I will be live at 3 p.m. UK time when the game finally launches. So come and join me here on YouTube or Twitch. Join my Discord, which the link is going to be on the description. And let's try and have some private matches as well. If you're new here, do subscribe and drop me a like. I hope you enjoyed the video. Thank you for watching and I'll see you all next time.